have a 1953 GMC. I believe this old girl's a one ton. She's been setting for about 20 years, maybe a little longer, maybe a little less, but we're gonna get her running. The motor is locked up solid in this old girl. We, uh, when we pulled her on the trailer, the rear wheels wouldn't move and uh, apparently it was still in gear. And when I hit, pressed the clutch in, she rolled. One rear drum still locked up, but she does have the good old inline six. But as you can see, let's see here. You can pull on this belt as hard as you want and it will not move a lick. So we're gonna have to pull them plugs out of there and circle with some PB blaster and probably some ATF transmission fluid mix and we should be able to get her loose. But she does have one of them good old hydraulic dump beds. The wood on this bed is just absolutely gone. It was non-treated wood and uh, it didn't hold up to the elements real good. She did come with a extra engine I'm sure this one's no good because you can see the bell housing's cracked on it and it is locked up as well. But all in all, it's a pretty nice old truck. We do have a pile of starters. We're always needing these. This is a later 60s style starter, early 60s. And these are starters off about this year model because they have the kick down and they all have new switches on them. So we'll keep these things around. Who knows what was wrong with them? Here's part of a good old carburetor. And as you can see, it's got the big hydraulic cylinder here and somebody did put some new stainless steel hoses on it. Interior wise, we have some cab rust, nothing too bad. I mean, inside she's got 60,000 something miles it says. She has the good old chrome here and there. GMC on the heater box, the seat's in good shape. Jiggle stick moves around, so that's your controls for the bed. Shouldn't be too hard to get her running, and we'll see if the bed works. Uh, we will have to get a bunch of this rotted off wood off of here because uh, it's just gonna make a mess. But instead of talking, we're gonna go ahead and uh, see if we can get her broke loose, and I think we're gonna try to get her driving, maybe not on the highway, but around the yard, because she's got all the stuff that should make it be able to drive, except for, uh, over here, this tire, well, them two tires are a little rough, but I'm sure we can figure something out. So we got to pull these plugs out of here and let her set for a few days with some stuff soaking in her and it shouldn't be too hard to get her loose. Hey, I meant to say uh, acetone transmission fluid mix, but for some reason we said ATF and transmission fluid mix, which is the same thing. Let's see, get all this dirt so we don't get it down in the engine. It probably wouldn't hurt nothing anyway with it being locked up, but you never know. These dirt daubers will make a home anywhere. And I mean, they can really pack the dirt in there. I'm gonna go ahead and get them rear ones and we'll spray this down with some PB Blaster and get these oh, plugs yeah. out. Quick spray with the PB Blaster. We're gonna spray her again just for good luck here. That should do it. We'll let this soak for a little while just so we don't break none of them off in there. And well, I'll get back with you when we're ready to take them out. Pull the plugs out now. Uh, hopefully, they'll come out rather easy. We're hoping not to see a bunch of rust on the end of them, but honestly, they're clean. I'm not too sure why she's locked up. You can see there's a you know, some carbon buildup, but so far, that one looks good. A lot better than what we normally get. Same with that. That's strange. No rust either. Huh. on that one well i'm not too sure why she's locked up then normally you'll see a little bit of 
where moisture has been on them and that's caused it to lock up but every single one of these is good and you can see where that pb blaster went and it's already penetrated the, the back of the plug so it's soaked in there pretty good Last one. Ah, here's our culprit. You can see just a little bit of rust and green corrosion there. Nothing bad, but that may be the cylinder that is stuck. I'm gonna say it is. We'll give them all a good treatment though. Well, I'm gonna turn you guys off. I'm gonna finish filling these bad boys up and we'll let, them, we'll let it set for a day or so and come back and try to wiggle the motor back and forth and it shouldn't take a whole lot to get it loose, I don't think. Hopefully you guys can kind of see what's going on here. We're gonna grab the good old fan and see if we can get some. Oh, wait a minute. Listen to that. What if it's got a loose rod? You can hear it. Just barely moving. Come on, old girl. Oh, it moved a little. There we go. <sighs> Don't break on me now, belt. Hold on, there we go. She's hanging up on a spot there. I think she, I think she's rolling over. I'm gonna say the motor's good to go now. It seems like that starter had enough ump to roll it past the spot where it was catching and she seems to be free now so we got to clean a set of points and we'll clean these plugs up and reuse them and uh well it shouldn't be too much harder to get this old girl running and hopefully drive well, we got it rolling over this is just some of the good old Vaveline uh, 2050 racing oil with the zinc in it and uh, we'll put a little bit in each cylinder just to help lubricate it and keep anything from wearing real bad because a lot of times we start these for the first go around off starting fluid and that ain't the best thing for the cylinder so always good to give it a little bit of oil or engine stop leak something like that and it seems to help them out a little also it'll help it build some compression went ahead and we took the sandpaper to the plugs they don't look too bad we're gonna go ahead and uh spray them a little bit with some starting fluid then uh i always take the propane torch and just Do that to them. That may not do anything, but it always seems to help. The starting fluids to get all the stuff that the sandpaper knocked off, like the little bits of metal and carbon. I guess it's time to see what these points look like. Let's see here. Actually, that distributor bug in there looks pretty new. The points do have quite a bit of little corrosion on them. Nothing a little bit of sandpaper won't help. And also, I mean, that thing looks brand spanking new. It was probably put on there 20 or so years ago. You can see the corrosion coming off of them and getting on the sandpaper there and falling down. Kind of like battery terminals get corroded. 
the points do too. So just takes a little bit of that and well, they're not too bad. I'll hit it a few more times with the sandpaper to get back. Sanded pretty good. We'll give them a spray of starting fluid. Kind of clean them off and I'm gonna go turn the key on and we'll see if we can get some spark because this one actually came with a key, which is not normal. Normally we don't have a nice key switch here, but we'll turn the good old points on and see if we get some spark. That's that I did because this just comes straight from the key. I have no idea where uh, that, this wire goes to the back of the gauge cluster. So we're just gonna hook a new wire to the coil and There's go from there. a good six and a half miles of this red wire underneath the dash. So we're gonna do the right thing and just cut it off here and hook it strict straight into the battery because I have no idea where it goes, but I do know it ain't hooked up to the key. Let's see if that does us anything. Any spark? There we go. can see she smokes a little bit but nothing major we got her running now we'll so start the old girl we'll give it a little bit of starting fluid and some gas down in there and a lot of people ask where these things come from these are just 97 cents at the walmart they're uh, sauce bottles probably not rated for fuel but i always use them for that might not be the best idea though that is full and let's give her a whirl to go come on over that was the first roll over too i mean she wants to live she is leaking fuel from every which way out of the carburetor Oh, that's that's one reason why she's wide open on the old throttle because the radicus giganticuses have uh, made nest up here with all the wood from the bed you can see all that crumbled up wood there we go
think I breathed in more of that starting flood than the old engine did. <coughs> We weren't fast enough on the old ether can. We'll hold this in our hand this time, and as soon as she fires, we'll run over here and spray her. Sometimes you gotta get them running off the ether for a little while and get some heat into them, then they'll run. Oh. Well, we weren't fast enough again. wind's carrying away our smoke signal but she's smoking pretty good she does run now i think she's just not getting enough fuel with just you know pouring it in there and it really doesn't like the ether but we've got her running she is kind of warm now so we're gonna let her set we'll hook a fuel system up of sorts here and uh maybe we can get her to run off a gas can instead of running it off the good old bottle and the uh ether but she is a runner it's just she ain't running that great yet <laughs>
and see if that bed will work now. We've messed with that axle or drum for a while now and it still don't want to come loose. So that's going to be a problem, but maybe the bed will work. seem the bed does work actually so it does have a hydraulic dump bed it's just slowly it should slowly put itself back where it should be i'm gonna mess with it a little bit more get back to the gas and we'll see if we can get it moving a little bit better not too sure we will be able to without soaking that drum and stuff because it just the lug nuts are solid on there and it just don't want to move for some reason after 20 or 30 years and got the motor unlocked and everything it kind of drives but we got it running at least we tried driving around here and our water pump did start pouring water out here if you look so it won't keep watering it long enough to really drive it around so we're not gonna we don't want to get this motor too hot we don't have a spare water pump at the moment but she does run she kind of drives this drum over here is still kind of sticking we didn't get another new belt but all in all we got her running thank you guys for watching and we have a pretty cool old Dodge car, hopefully for the next video. It's a 30, 28 model. We've been working on it for a while and parts are just hard to get for it. It was supposed to be this week, but we decided to post this one this week instead of that one. So hopefully next week we'll have that 28 Dodge car. And please consider leaving a like and maybe subscribing because we got a lot more cool content coming to the channel. I'll see you in the next video.